So a lot of growers understand the benefits of using starter fertilizer and in furrow products on their planter. And we all wonder, you know, what's the cost? Is it cost prohibitive to apply that in a continuous stream? And when we apply in a continuous stream, how much of the product is actually getting used by the plant? So at 360, we set out to learn about this topic and see if there was a better way to apply your in furrow products. So as we were learning about where a small plant uses the in furrow product, we came up with a few tests. We started with just individually treating uh, seeds in a bucket and also in a small trough. And we were seeing a real benefit to using individual dosing of the seed uh, for the in furrow product. And we had the idea to move to a field test. So uh, we pulled the planter across the field, maybe about 50 feet. And I bet we had probably 20 engineers and, and agronomy interns individually dosing with small syringes each seed. And then we would walk back over and cover it up uh, and close the trench. And, and we learned that individually dosing each seed is, is uh, uh, that's hard to do. And also uh, in closing, getting uh, consistent closing. So we probably spent an entire afternoon out there on our hands and knees treating 50 feet of seeds. And I don't know that we got anything out of it, but it was an interesting experiment and a good team building activity. <laughs> so we found that the in product in between the seeds didn't really uh, increase the effectiveness of the in product. So we thought, well, what if we just cut it out and we could take that as savings? So if there's a seed every six inches, uh, we tried a three inch dash, two inch dash, probably even a one inch dash. And then obviously we compared that to a control of continuous uh, application across the, uh, the full six inches. And we really settled uh, on the three inch dash and the two inch dash, which would be an eff effective savings of you know, 50 or 66%. Uh, and that's in your Illinois type planting conditions. Um, when you get into the further south, and this was something we noticed early on, uh, really high uptake in the south because their planting uh, seed spacing gets to be quite a bit farther apart. So we were seeing savings of 80 and even 90 percent with a two and three inch dash. Most of the products we design at 360 were shooting for a yield gain. However, with 360 dash, we were okay with the yield equivalence because we're taking the savings of our in furrow product as a financial gain. Something that came up a lot of times at the farm shows when people would come up and talk to us was not just the savings, but also the logistics aspect. If you're only applying a 50% rate, the product is only leaving the tank at half the rate, which means that if you could previously apply 50 acres, before you stopped for more fertilizer, now you could go 100 acres or 150 acres. And that was a huge benefit to a lot of people who find uh, on planter uh, liquid to be very frustrating from a logistics standpoint. So now we knew we could take the in furrow product and actually remove the portion that was, has no financial benefit and really focus on the portion that falls in the immediate vicinity of the seed. So. How do we do that? Well, we started with some prototypes. Uh, we built an entire planter of sorts inside that we could recirculate both water and starter. And we started building prototypes with different types of high-speed actuators, different outlet tubes, different hoses, uh, different application types, uh, firmers, 360 wave, uh, just all the different variables that we were gonna have to take into account. What we came up with was a mostly plastic design that gave us the superior corrosion protection, but also let us uh, rapid prototype with injection molding and 3D printing. So we were able to iterate our prototypes very quickly. So one of the first parts that we really had to look into was the timing. We need to know when to start and stop the column of liquid, you know, to apply just on the seed. So 
we looked at timing and the inputs for the seed tubes, and we found that the flighted belt from Precision Planting Speed Tube and the brush belt from John Deere Exact Emerge gave a superior uh, confidence in the placement of the seed in furrow compared to just your standard free fall seed tube. And that gave us the highest confidence of knowing when to start and stop the column of liquid so that the dash fell directly on top of the seed. What we found very quickly is starting and stopping a column of liquid in the tube at that high a rate caused a lot of uh, negative effects. The pressure waves of starting and stopping uh, had very adverse effects on shot quality, uh, plunger control, just giving a, a high reliability of the shot, both placement and rate within the, uh, within the applied amount just gave us all kinds of problems. So what we settled on was a very specific type of outlet tube. It has the properties of um, kind of like an air hose. It's a, a braided rubber and it both, both absorbs some of the pressure waves, and it also uh, is very flexible for easy routing uh, down to the applicator. Um, the other part of the system that we specifically designed to improve reliability and accuracy was the accumulator. Uh, it's attached to the back of the dash valve. It's an integrated design, and that also helps absorb some of the pressure waves and just improve the reliability across all of the dashes. One of the other things we noticed is that the outlet orifice, where the liquid exits the tube right before it's dispensed onto the seed, uh, needed to be a, a very specific size. So we were looking at all the applicators, uh, mainly Firmers, 360 Wave, those were our primary options. Uh, we needed a way to deliver the dash of your infro product into this the furrow, and the Outlet orifice was very specific because if it was too, uh, too small, it was too constricting, we couldn't get enough flow out the tube you know, in the set amount of time, you know, your two or three inch dash. And if it was too large, uh, whenever we close the valve, a little bit of your infro product would just leak out uh, in between each shot. And then that had the effect of you know, kind of emptying the outlet tube. Well, then when we wanted to open the valve again and dispense a little bit more, the first thing we had to do was recharge the outlet uh, tube. So the outlet orifice is very specific in that it keeps the column of liquid, you, you know, the outlet tube fully charged. You know, it's full of liquid the entire time so that when we open the valve and we put a little bit of your product in the tube, the same amount of liquid comes out the tube and it really improved the accuracy and the reliability of the dash. The other reason that the applicator is important is because we need to know uh, which applicator you're using because it has some distance uh, from where the seed falls to where the dash is dispensed. So if we know that exact distance, we know how fast you're traveling, we can calculate how long to wait. And that just gives us the confidence to know when to turn on and off the dash valve. When we were considering the planters that this dash valve was going to go on, and also the products that people would want to apply through it, uh, we considered that we should support a two and a half GPA up to 15 GPA local concentration. That's a, as measured at the seed and planting speeds between four and 10 miles an hour. So that's a lot of variability, a huge range in the flow rates as well. So we took a hard look at the internal components and we settled on a design where we have very precise control, both of the open distance and also the time. So when we decide we want to open the dash valve, it pulls off the check seat to a known rate and then it slams it back closed. So that gives us very precise control of how much we're applying and also how long it's open. We've designed a lot of aftermarket components and on planters, 
uh, very common to have a lot of aftermarket components from a variety of manufacturers and, and everybody has to lay their own harnessing. So we took a hard look at what this would, you know, what we could do here and we settled on a wireless design. Uh, we're getting power from each row. Uh, we're just borrowing a little bit of power that we need, you know, from the harnessing that's already there. And then all of the dash valves communicate wirelessly back to the dash hub at the planter pump controller. And that way we didn't have to lay our own uh, planter backbone harness. Another part of Inferro products that creates a lot of complexity is the pump system that will deliver the product to each row. Uh, we started to look at what's out there and there is a huge variety of pumps and pumping systems that could, that could have worked for us. But in order to simplify the ease of installation, uh, we teamed up with AgExcel and we supply two different pump options. We have a dual electric pump and a hydraulic pump. And that way it's just a turnkey option that our growers can pick whichever one suits their needs. So the rows communicate wirelessly to the hub and then the hub communicates wirelessly to an iPad app in the cab. And the other benefit to that is we're not running a bunch of wires up to the cab. We didn't have to sell you a custom controller, but you still get the ease of use that comes with the iPad app where you can set your rate and also monitor the flow rate on each individual row. We've talked a lot about the issues that we ran into during the design and a lot of the complexities that we had to tackle. But if we've done a good job as engineers, we've taken care of all of those details for you so that we can deliver a product that's approachable and user-friendly.